Hi, and welcome to the Barbarian Investor Show. I'm your host, Adam Jason, uh, and today we are delighted to be joined by uh, Stuart Corby, who is an advisor to HDAC, who have uh, an upcoming ICO, initial coin offering. Uh, and I'm also joined here in the studio by Eddie Travia, CEO of Coincilium. Uh, which is a uh, venture builder and investor in the blockchain space, and Eddie is uh, an advisor on the HDAC uh, project. Uh, so, Stuart, uh, thank you for joining us uh, all the way from Singapore. Hi, good, good to morning. be here. There's been a lot of uh, anticipation around this this project and, and your ICO. Uh, it seems to be causing quite a bit of buzz online. Could you just uh, give us, you know, a quick introduction as to what HDAC's offering is, the key offering? Sure. Well, uh, I'm an advisor to HDAC, and one of the reasons I got involved is because their key offering is actually to do with the Internet of Things. So uh, there's some technical issues about Internet of Things devices connecting, mm -hmm. and uh, the Hyundai DAC engineers have applied themselves to trying to fix those, and I think they've done a pretty good job. So right. it's, uh, it's an IoT connection uh, system which uses blockchain to allow the devices to talk to each other seamlessly and then uh, transact with each other. Um, which is a technically difficult thing to do and they seem to have pulled it off. So the blockchain and Internet of Things seem to be two technologies which are, you know, uh, very good bedfellows. Um, you know, the Internet of Things requires uh, a, a structure, a system whereby you can have multiple machines registered and also payments, um, you know, transacting between them machine to machine. Um, in, in your opinion, uh, how is HDAC kind of set apart from, you know, some of the other uh, IoT offerings that we're starting to see uh, emerge from the blockchain space? Well, one of the key things about the HDAC platform is they've married the private uh, permission blockchains to a public blockchain. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the real world, what that means is that I can build a little community of Internet of Things devices mm -hmm. and they can talk to each other uh, and they can transact. They don't really see transactions as money. They see it as the amount of effort one of their colleagues has to do to achieve a task. And so once they know how much effort their colleague has to put in, then Basically, that means that they can effectively work as a team by working out who should do what and, and distributing within sort of a semi-autonomous or autonomous mode. Um, and that's all uh, allowed within the HDAC system. So what happens is those are called tokens. Uh, and then we get to the, the humans, and the humans might want to use some of those Internet of Things devices. Um, so somehow they have to pay for it. So that's where it turns into the, the public blockchain, um, which acts like uh, exactly the same as a coin. Um, you, you basically buy one of those coins and then you convert it into the tokens you need to talk to that particular community of devices. Okay, it's, it's very interesting. So Eddie, to, to bring you in here, you, you've been in the blockchain space for, for a number of years, uh, you're a bit of an authority in the space. Um, Stuart mentions uh, public and private blockchains. Um, mm -hmm. Now public blockchains is you know what everyone really knows as the blockchain, but private blockchains, the use um, you know maybe more for corporates and uh, leaning more towards businesses, is that something that you're seeing kind of emerging more now or, or a hybrid system as HDAC are using? Yes, I think it's quite interesting to see that there is, uh, first of all, there is a buildup of expertise and there is more know-how around the world. And it's very exciting to see a project coming from Korea. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, I have met with the HDAC team uh, several months ago, uh, first in London, and then uh, I traveled to Seoul and met the, the team there. Very impressive uh, team. They also have um, research and tech development in Zug in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very interesting to see that, uh, you know, blockchain, good projects in blockchain are coming from all over the world. Um, and so it also demonstrates that Concilium now is not only an investor but also uh, an advisor to this type of very uh, ambitious uh, ICOs. So to go back to the question about public and private blockchains, uh, we see a lot of initiatives. So for example, uh, sidechains are, are an example. And in this particular case, I like the fact that um, HDAC will enable um, ecosystems or will enable uh, smaller uh, ecosystems and uh, payment solutions to be built on and to build private chains around their solutions. So basically they will have uh, the ability for uh, a kind of a secondary chain which will be built by uh, other parties. So it's quite mm -hmm. interesting and I also like the fact that they have this kind of energy efficient method and mm -hmm. uh, uh, what they call EPOW, maybe Stuart can tell us more uh, about it. 
Yeah, Stuart, so the, the eco-friendly proof-of-work mining system, which is uh, aimed at you know, uh, encouraging people to join the network and provide computing power, can you just give us a, a brief kind of explanation of, of how that works? Because the coin is basically facilitating this entrance into the tokens, uh, we want the coin to be as efficient as possible. And, and proof of work is something which was a, you know, the great first invention, but as always, humans improve. Uh, so basically what the, the engineers have done is they, they've worked out a way which allows ePow to reduce the energy consumption of the chips which are working to mine the blockchain. Um, mm. And the way they do that is they simply say, hey, you can work for a certain amount of time, but then you have to take a, a holiday or a break. Um, and they do that before the expensive cooling comes into place. So it's good for the environment, uh, but it's also good for the bottom line because it, they, the engineers have hit it at about 20% of the cost of uh, traditional proof of work, uh, which makes a big difference to the cost of, of running the system for the community. Okay, brilliant. So uh, with an eye on, on keeping green. So just to uh, wrap it up now, um, you're doing an ICO. Um, the target, I believe, is 6,000 Bitcoin that you're looking to raise. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, the ICO okay. started uh, yesterday and runs till the 22nd of December. Um, okay. We had good pre-ICO sales with our corporate partners and people who are, are very interested in, in working with the business in a B2B way, as well as some, uh, some other private investors. Mm -hmm. um, but what we want is participation from the community. And the best way of doing that is opening it up to everybody. Uh, hence the, the 6,000 uh, Bitcoin raise now. Brilliant. And when can we expect to see your platform operational? Do, do you have, you know, within your roadmap, uh uh, an idea of when it will be up and running? Sure, well I live in Seoul so uh, anybody's welcome to come join me for a coffee in a, <laughs> in a few weeks time at the coffee shop that's already in construction at the bottom of the, the HDAC building. Um, <laughs> Uh, the secondary level of that, that will be in HDAC coin and then they'll turn to HDAC token as the first implementation. Mm -hmm. There's also mm -hmm. a, uh, a housing development being built where all your utility bills and entrance payments will be uh, facilitated through HDAC token. Uh, and uh, Hyundai Heavy Industries have, uh, are looking at smart ships uh, and using the HDAC token within that as well. Um, so there's a variety of different projects which are coming on. Obviously they're big projects because what we're doing is we're, we're asking people to change the way that they function uh, mm -hmm. and the, the way that they look at how their devices are communicating, but there's a big need for it too. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see which, which other partners come along. Um, the Intel, um, they're doing facial recognition in order to uh, do car sharing and that's running on HDAC token too. Um, so that'll be coming along in the next year as well. Um, so it's a it's a, a really busy space, uh, and HDAC wants to help as many people as possible get into it and and understand how their system and platform works. Okay, fantastic. Well, we very much look forward to uh, you know the ICO and and seeing the platform up and running. Eddie, I'm sure you'll be uh, representing HDAC at the various events uh, around the world, uh, and we look forward to hearing more from you as well. Um, so thank you very much, Stuart, for joining us. Uh, it's been a pleasure speaking to you and uh, best of luck with the ICO and uh, we hope to hear from you soon. Great, thank you very much for your time.